your launch pad, your structure that allows the astronaut to go into um, the rocket ship. We're going to work on the terrain. The main source of influence for this particular uh, environment is in, from an image I found on uh, Pinterest. And in this particular image, you can see how the illustrator or the artist has the um, the terrain, which you would, you know the ground, separate from the mountain shape. So we're going to address each of these elements separately in two different tutorials. The first is going to be relatively easy, um, and we're going to use Maya Sculpt tools. So let me close this. And I'm going to bring this into Maya as my source of reference. So I'll go to View, Image Plane, Import Image, and find that image under my Source Images folder. And I'll put it right here, scaled up pretty big. And I, I kind of want my camera to look like that as well. So. What I'm going to do now that I have this image plane in here is I'm going to create a camera. I'll go to Create Cameras Camera. And now that I have that camera created, you can see that it says Camera 1. I'm going to rename it to uh, Rocket Cam. And I'm going to go to all four viewports. In my upper left viewport, I'm going to click on Panels, Perspective, and Rocket Cam. And I'll look through this. So I'm in my Rocket Camera right now. And I want to get my camera to look like this image. All right, so I'm just moving that image plane over. And I'm setting my camera up like this. All right, perfect. So. I like that perspective, however, I need to turn on my resolution gate. This is going to let me know what the camera sees. So if I zoom out right there, everything that's not in this gray box is actually going to be um, not rendered. So I kind of have it more space off to the right. I'm sorry, more space on the left side. So I don't want this rocket ship to be right in the center. And I'll rotate my reference image here. It's actually facing the opposite direction. Okay, so in this image, you can see that there's a lot of negative space off to one side. And that's also to show maybe that's home, right? This uh, distant planet. So that's exactly where I want to replicate. So now that I have my rocket camera set up in the position that I want it to be, I'm going to click on the lock camera. So now I can't zoom in or out in this particular perspective, but I will go into my perspective view uh, to model different things. Okay. Uh, secondly, I'm going to right mouse click on this four um, panel layout and go to the three pane split left. So my upper left camera, our window is going to be my rocket cam. My lower left will be my say my front camera or I'll actually make this my side camera because I want to see the the side of the um, rocket ship okay so I have three views and I have my perspective view and I, I have a general idea of what this environment is going to look like right now I'll rotate it like this 90 degrees so first thing as you can see is just getting everything set up perfectly alright I set up my camera the way I want it to be in the shot 
And if I want to change the camera, it's locked. I just go to this button here and unlock it. And I can move my camera off to the right like this. Okay, and then I'll go back and I'll lock it. Okay. So now I'm going to create um, a polygon plane. I'll take this layer here, or this image plane. I'll click on layers, create layer from selected. And now I have a new layer. We'll just call it um, Rocket ENV, Rocket Environment. I'll save that, turn it to layer, and I'll hide it. First thing I need to do right now is save it because I, I have reached a, a point in this particular project where I don't want to lose any of my progress. So I'll call this background underscore 01. I'll save that. Perfect. Okay. Got to get some water. All right, I'll go to create polygon primitive plane and I'll simply click and drag do that I'll move it underneath this platform okay and I'll press spacebar to see what I'm looking at in my rocket cam okay so I'm like moving it I don't want to move it so far that I have this this negative space here, right? So I'm just going to scale this. I'll scale it wide like that. I'll go to the edge and then push it back this way. Okay. And then so you can see my, my camera is right there. That's my camera. I'm not going to need a lot of this space right here. So I want to bring it closer to the camera. So I want to optimize as much of this shape as I can. So there's the tip of that scene. Here's the other plane there. All right, I think that should be fine. So our mountains are going to go right over here. So that's good for me so far. So far, so good. I'll press spacebar so I can navigate my perspective view. The next thing that we need to do is um, increase the subdivisions on this surface. So we'll go to edit mesh. No, I'm sorry, we'll go to mesh smooth. I'll press G a few times so that I can get more subdivisions on this ground. And I'll press G one more time. And then I'll rename this to ground. And you can see in my outliner or my channel box editor, I smoothed it out seven times. Okay. Now this is the fun part. I'm going to go to Windows UI Element Shelf. And under my shelf, I have the sculpting tools here. See, I have a, this is a sculpting tool. This is a smooth, that's the relax, that's the grab. And I'm going to be using these four, maybe these three tools the entire time. So I'll talk about one at a time. If I double click on the sculpt tool, I get this um, tool settings that opens up. And you'll immediately notice that my ground plane, because it was selected, it turns gray. All right. Now my brush is this uh, circle, this black circle. I can change the size in my tool settings. And my brush has now got smaller. I can increase the strength, which means that as I click and drag, the surface um, is like greatly affected by the strength that I have. So if I dial this down to 14, I'll get that shape. And I can press Control-Z. Now for me, I don't like to have this window floating around. I'm actually going to enable the helpline. And at the bottom, I want you to notice what it says here. So if I hold B, left mouse click and drag, you see it says brush size. And you can see the, 
the uh, size getting smaller and larger. If I hold M you can s and drag it up and down, you can see that the brush strength gets smaller and larger. Okay? So these are the same um, sculpting uh, shortcuts that you use in Mudbox if you're familiar with that software. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is start to work on this terrain. I'll bring up my reference image again and I notice in this reference image there's like these little hills in the foreground of the camera. So that's the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work on these hills. Alright, where's my camera? There it is. Right there. Now I'll press spacebar and I'll also look at my um, my ground or my uh, rocket camera. I'll zoom in here and I'll start to move that. You see? So I'm kind of creating like a heel shape. Now you can see that little bump right there I just created. It's a, maybe a little too high. And if I click and hold, it continues to build up. So I'll use the next tool, which is called the Smooth tool. So if I click on the Smooth tool, and I'll go into my perspective camera, it will actually bring that surface down. So click and drag, and it brings the surface down. You see? it won't obstruct the uh, the view. So let me bring this down. Okay. So if I increase the strength by holding M and left mouse click and drag it up, it's going to smooth it out even more. Now the next tool I'll use is called the grab tool. Alright. So maybe this is like taking too long for me to smooth. If I click on the fourth one, grab tool, I'm just going to find an area, I'll change the brush size a little bit smaller, and I'll drag and pull it down. You see? So this helps me to create these kind of shapes like this. Alright? I can click and drag and move this up if I wanted to. Okay. Now all of this in the background needs to have some sort of um, I think like texture to it not necessarily texture but it, it needs to be modified as well so uh, this is also a really cool one this is the stamp all right or the imprint tool so if I click on that and I look at my surface I'm going to hold B and make my uh, brush size larger. And now when I left mouse click and hold, you can see this, like this weird pattern show. All right. If I let go, it's going to leave an imprint of that pattern on the ground there, which could make for um, pretty cool uh, mountain shapes. But for me, I don't want to use this as a mountain shape. So I'm going to bring the strength down by holding M, left mouse click and drag, and I'll add a few more, and I'm going to actually use the uh, smooth tool to bring it down. All right. So I just want to break up the uh, surface so that it's not so um, flat. Okay. And I'll do over here. So you use larger. Right here. Left mouse click and drag. Okay. And I won't make everything look like that. Just a few shapes. Now I'll go into the smooth tool. I'll make my smooth tool really big. I'll hold B, left mouse click and drag. And I'm just going to smooth out the surface because it's starting to lose a little bit of detail. It's uh, kind of like low poly. So it's always important to look at what you're you're doing through your renderable camera as well. So I'm just kind of smoothing out some of that geometry back there. If you left mouse click and hold, 
it'll go down a little faster. I'll hold B, I'll drag this down here, like that. Okay, that's pretty much it. All right, I don't like some of this structures back here, it's starting to look too much like a sand dune. Sand dunes. All right. You can flatten some areas down a little faster. Or you could use the uh, flatten tool right here, which is to pretty much level the surface. So I'm adding some flat spots in the ground, in the terrain. I'll hold B, left mouse click and drag to um, flatten down this little hill here. And now it's, it's just more interesting to look at. The horizon isn't just a straight line. It does have some folds and some undulations in there. So that's pretty much it. That's how you create the, the terrain. Okay. And this was our reference image that I found on Pinterest. Let me snap it here. Kind of scale it down a little bit so you could see that in the next tutorial we're going to work on the uh, mountain shape so hope you guys like it um, like subscribe and share this particular video and I'll see you in the next tutorial